All right, let's get started. Welcome everyone to the grand finals match of the AI Scriptors Championship. It's been a few, not days, weeks, but months since we've had our last match of the AI Scriptors Championship. We had a few matches that uh, were skipped, and so we're going to cast this uh, grand finals to provide a conclusion to this tournament. For those of you who are new to this tournament, this tournament was started by Aleph, one of the scriptors in the AI scriptors community. Uh, and the, the big thing of this tournament is showcasing several different maps the, that AIs will be facing on and also introducing concepts of drafting civilizations and maps for the AI scriptors preferences. So you can see the results of the draft here. Estes, the scripter of Trouble Warrior. And then Promi, of course, is the author of Promi. The AIs that will be playing in this match. So the grand finals, unlike the other matches in this tournament, are a best of five. So we could be seeing as many as five matches today. Our first map, which we'll be watching, is on Fen Crazy. A 1v1, which is the definitely the most diverse map that you'll come across. And then map two will be Baltic, a 3v3. Get to see some naval action, perhaps. Then map three on Dust Bowl, 2v2. And Dust Bowl features no food sources except for some starting farms. And in map four, we'll have a Land Nomad 4v4. And then for the final match, if we get to it, will be a 1v1 on Arabia. A nice way to round it out. And so let's get started with the first match here. Switch over to the game. And up first we've got the picking the AIs here. We've got the Tribal playing as Vikings and Promi playing as Chinese. And the first map will be the Fen Crazy map. And let's see what Fan Crazy is going to give us today. Some nice, cozy music to get us started. Get going, Marco Polo. And look at that, we've got some Land Nomad start with some Archery Rangers starting out. So let's take a look at the map here. So we've got several shapes dotted around. So Promi has two archer ranges separated, while Tribal has two archer ranges next to each other. And Tribal's got a lumber camp started near the edge of the map. Not the best location. Let's see, looks like Promi's got the lumber camp started over here. At the top of the map, right next to the water and the snake of land here. So neither AI has an ideal location to start out with. Though Promi could decide to do some good fishing here. Let's look at these trees here. Okay, so that they looks like they start out with 88 wood. If you're new to the Fen Crazy, the biggest thing that's crazy about this map is all of the resources have non-standard resource amounts. So we got tribal building a good uh, TC location next to some deer and boar. This boar is unlucky, so at only 287 food. And the deer also is unlucky, only 114, but maybe the sheep got lucky here. Okay, nope, they're just the normal 100 amount. And check in the other resources. We've got stone with 328, and gold with 496. And then the fish. That pretty normal amounts. I think those are the standard amounts. So besides the land nomad start, this is the resources really aren't all that strange. In fact, it's pretty sparse on the resources and how much the resources store. And definitely out of all the starting locations, I prefer tribal. Tribal is in the mainland down here. No one's going to reach those cliffs. And so Tribal gets like 80% of the map, while Promi only gets this little sliver of land. Also got some random outposts. Oh, let's look at this. 
So looks like Tribal just found Promi. Oh, and I didn't actually notice this. I got a house trapped there, and same with the villager. Did Promi delete the TC? That's not good news. I'm gonna switch to Promi's point of view. Promi's got enough wood for a TC. Where'd the TC go? Well, if Promi doesn't build a TC soon, it's gonna be in GG, I think. So I saw that Promi built a, had a TC foundation down here, but I wonder if Promi has some code to delete the TC. Someone tell Promi to change the code in his AI. That's not how you want to play Land Nomad. So, Tribal's got a decent start here. Lots of sheep. Got a mill down here. So, you got some farms going. Two gold mines right next to each other. Quite nice. Got some good wood here. And Promi's still here plugging away on wood. Got two lumber camps. Uh, got enough wood to build a TC. I am curious if Promi, I Promi should be able to build a TC without stone. I'm trying to remind myself of how that works. Let's see. TC, okay, so it does require some stone. And so by canceling the TC, Promi lost out on some stone there. Yeah, I'm not sure that Promi has some code to mine some stones, so that might be the issue. Alright, so tro uh, Tribal is going up to the Feudal Age. I'm going to switch back to Tribal's point of view and take off the Marco Polo here, just to get some Tribal point of view. So, Tribal knows about one of Promi's lumber camps. And if Tribal is a human player, he'd be able to see the second one here. But Tribal's not human. And Tribal's got a dock going in one of the two lakes. So. Yep, there is a, a villager trapped near the top of the map here next to the house. That's one of the funny things about the Fen Crazy is sometimes he gets some weird generations. But I don't think uh, Tribal's going to be bothered about that because Promi, switching back to Promi here. Promi's got an outpost under attack, but Promi's still here on two lumber camps. Just trapping away on wood, enjoying life. But Promi might not be enjoying life for long. All right, let's see if these skirmishers go toward the north. Yes, these skirmishers should be enough to kill off Promi for the first match. All right, there we go. Two villagers down. Trouble you can find these two villagers up here. Yeah, Promi knew that he was under pressure. Resetting strategy. Maybe Promi can go for the stone mining strategy to build a TC. But Promi might not have that strategy built in. Stone mining in the Dark Age is a pretty rare strategy. Maybe unless you're going for a trash. Alright, here we go. Tribal's Rampage of Skirmishers. I forget the game will be over in about one minute. Yeah, it looks like Promi's not resigning. So we got the villager here. We got the two archery ranges. But I'm gonna call it here. There's nothing. Oh! Promi called it. I didn't have to call the game.
All right, well, that's unfortunate for Promi. I think due to a scripting bug, I uh, deleted the TC. The Tribal gets the win for game one. Let's enter the score here. And let's switch over here to the to the draft screen. So we got the second map is Baltic, the 3v3. And as expected, you'll see some naval civilizations. Yeah, I'm not sure what we would have done if uh, both AIs had bugged out, if uh, Tribal had bugged out with the trapped villager. So just setting up the match here in the background. Yeah, just taking a look at the civilization. So it looks like Tribal's. I chose an Italians, Japanese, and Malay. And obviously those three are excellent on the water. And Japanese will have a few bonuses for infantry fights if it goes to that on land. And then Promi, I think has gone for the similar strategy as well. Let's take a look at Promi's civilizations. The, both the, them picked Japanese, but in this case probably went for Malay and Vikings instead of Italians. Yep, so the only difference is Italians versus Vikings. It'd be fun to see if he got some longboats on this this map here. And so this is something I haven't seen a lot, is I've seen Tribal's naval strategy or Promi's naval strategy. And looking to see, uh, SC did pick Baltic, so Tribal, this will be one of Tribal's home maps. We'll see if that confidence pays off. Yeah, we got some Celtic music going. No Celts playing on this map. All right, let's switch over to the game. I think we're about ready to go. Make sure everything's set. Ready, I think we're ready to go. Alright, time for Marco Polo again. And a lot of X's dotted on the map. And as usual, Baltic has a bunch of inlets here. So it looks like Tribal's here on the the northern end of the lake. And Promi's here on the southern end. I think notably here, I think Promi has more of the land area, so that should give some advantage. And looking at flanks versus pocket, we've got Promi in the Viking pocket, which should be good. And the other pocket is Malay. That should be fine. And then the Japanese pocket. And flanks here in tribal, we've got the Japanese and the Malay. So we got so we got the Italians as pocket. One thing I'm curious about is where the docks are gonna go. Whether the we will probably place the dock here on the inlet on the north end of the map. I'm curious to see if yellow will go for the safe waters in the bay or whether yellow will 
build in the deep waters. Alright, looks like Tribal has found Promi. See the scout here. And so we've got Purple has already built a dock. Oh nice, Tribal has planted some Palisades here. That's actually something I wouldn't have expected. That's some nice code in there. And same thing here. Looks like Tribal on the Teal is going to build off some Palisades. It's a very nice play there from Tribal and also picking a pretty good spot. Obviously, Tribal could have placed it a couple tiles closer. And okay, we got a Red Scout that made its way in. So, Red will get some scat in, but that scat will be trapped. And also trapped in that Teal Scout. Oh, I'm not sure that that wall is going to get built. Sorry, Teal. So now Teal might have a stuck villager. And so just, uh, I imagine that the tribal as... So SD has been probably one of the main scriptures that has focused on building some good wall coding. And so I'm curious to see how well Tribal knows to delete a segment of the wall to start attacking. Tribal should be able to do that pretty well here. Let's look at some naval numbers here. So we got five ships for Promi in red. Similar numbers for purple. And yellow is building in the, the bay here. Also, we got six ships for yellow. And notably, uh, Teal is not going for a dock. Blue has a couple docks with five ships. And green has three. So Promi is definitely going for a more naval strategy. And also just looking at age advancement times, looks like green is slowest. Should be reaching feudal age in a few seconds here. Alright, so here's a Looks like Blue got the first worship here. And Blue is going for fire galleys. Which should be a common choice here. Alright, so we got our first water action of the game. Alright, so... And Teal is joining the action here. So Yellow's got a tower to defend. Well placed tower here. But these ships are defenseless. Let's see what's going on on this side of the map. Looks like green hasn't built any warships. How about... Okay, so green does have one. And purple is going for galleys. Meanwhile, blue has some... Mixing in some galleys here as well. This tower should take out a couple of ships, but not before this stock is taken out, I think. So, Promi is definitely going for a more passive approach. Let's see if this pays off. Definitely a lot of galleys from Purple, though. I would like to see those... I think Purple needs to attack with those galleys to be able to use all those resources spent wisely. Look at that. Yellow has gone for War Galley here. And I don't think Yellow's going to make it back on the water, so hopefully Yellow's able to rebound onto a land strategy. Not seeing a whole bunch of land units being made here. Let's look at. Does Red have any land military? No, so Red is going for a boom approach. And purple is sticking to land. I mean, to water. Alright, here we go. Big match. Oh, as War Galley research comes in. Alright. Fire ship from the Italians. So, no long boats this game. I 
I think. Travels went in the water here, even against purple. So I would say that Tribal is definitely ahead on this match. We got some teal ships right in the shore here. We got some defensive pikemen from yellow. And just looking at military as well. Curious to see how Tribal's land military is going. So we got some knights from green. Same from teal. How about blue? Blue's going for the boom approach as well. Red's got some knights. Yellow's got pikemen. And purple's got some knights here. So yeah, we got a double wall approach from green and teal do the same. Okay. So it looks like Teal knew to delete all the walls. It looks like there might be some conflicting uh, code here to uh, build the walls and also to delete them. So definitely military advantage here for Tribal. Got raised in the shore from green, but green hasn't decided to. Okay, green took down these walls. Yeah, it's coming in with some knights. Yeah, so definitely advantage to tribal the uh, whole way in this game. Just, just looking to see how well yellow and purple can defend. But uh, both of the Prome flanks are pretty outnumbered, I think. Just looking at the military numbers, only purple has a substantial army. Let's see, so any counter efforts? We've got a castle going here, but it'd be nice if it was able to be closest to the shore. Lots of docks going up for red. And going for elite samurai. Now, interesting turn here. Brumby's actually gotten the score lead. And I think that's mostly due to the, the red pocket here. It's definitely first to Imperial Age. We've got Galleon Research coming. I'll be curious here to see if red is able to retake the waters. But this momentary advantage for Promi might not last too long. We got Teal going up to Imperial, same as Green. Notably, the blue pocket is not going up to Imperial. Let's look at all those ships. Something else I noticed if you're looking at the population numbers for the, the purple and yellow flanks is that they are steadily growing higher. Yellow's got crossbowmen. Purple still only has some pikemen and knights. I think part of the problem is that uh, tribal is just kind of bringing in military numbers just slowly here one at a time. And green should be researching pikemen here soon. Those aren't going to do a whole lot just on their own. We got tracking and foraging coming from pikemen. Might not be the best approach here. So military numbers are even out as well. And so currently all of the players are either in Imperial Age or going up to Imperial Age. So surprisingly this match is turning around here. 
Of course, Trouble still has complete control of the water. Saw a red going for the galleon research, but it's not trading any ships here. So we'll see if the uh, sea advantage here can pay off for Tribal. Got an attack coming in here for red. Liz Green have to defend. The town center is down. Got a castle here, but it seems like Green's military is completely in just ships at this point. Is Blue able to come here and help? The uh, Malay here in Teal, okay, just got up to Elite Skirmisher, but those bad elephants should be able to do a good job of defending against Skirmishers. Yeah, so it looked pretty strong for Tribal, uh, but the, the land attacks in Tribal just weren't able to do enough damage. I don't know if that's due to Tribal's attacking code, the military wasn't able to get enough numbers at once. Yeah, it looks like Tribal didn't do enough of a switch from naval numbers into land units. Let's take a look here. The, it seems like Teal does still have an advantage against Yellow here, as Yellow only has a few military units. But green is being taken down quicker here. And what's blue doing to help? We've got about 60 military. But only about 20 of those units are land military, and those are blues coming to help Teal attack yellow. Yeah, I think a lot of those units are gonna come in having to defend this town instead. So let's watch here. Purple streaming in with some light cabin pikemen. Nice. Yellow's here with trebuchets and knights and light cab as well. Uh, Purple's also got some champions. And very low defense here from blue. So we got Teal's units are all around the main TC for Yellow. And so I think we could see Yellow go down perhaps. We got some units coming in here from Purple and Red to defend. But pretty soon it's just going to be Teal that's surviving against three Premier players. So chat messages here from from blue, so I'm just gonna turn those off here. Okay, so we got some genuine wasted crossbowmen, those are fun to see, but not a whole lot of cavalry that those can beat here. Most of Proma's units are either infantry or arbalists here or siege. Right, so we're starting to see Teal being attacked from both sides. This castle will go down in a few seconds. And we got the samurai storming in here. It looks like Teal's defense is mostly just skirmishers here. We had, they had a couple of Krambits earlier, but most of Teal's castles are taken down now. And. I would have liked to see a 
transition from skirmishers perhaps into arbalists at some point, but that didn't take place. But no land, no melee units will take out these skirmishers or take out these rams. And tribal is defeated. So tribal was defeated on his home map, making the score here one to one in the grand final. Going through the score here. All right, now to match three. We got Dust Bowl, Aztecs and Huns versus Ethiopians and Vietnamese. So the big thing about this map is the only food source are farms. Got tribal going with Aztecs, which I have some good farming. And Huns, perhaps going for the house bonus, which is save wood for farms. Then we got Ethiopians for Promi and Vietnamese. And off the top of my head, I'm not exactly sure what the going for there. I noticed that both of Promi's civilizations are archer civs. So maybe Promi's taking the advantage of the lack of food. So let's switch back to the game here and let's get started. All right, look at all of those good looking farms. All right, so we got Aztecs on the left side of the map, Huns on the southwest side. So Promi's occupying the east side of the map. So we'll see Ethiopians from red facing off against the Huns. And then Aztecs on the north facing off against the Vietnamese. So I'll be knowing tribal, both of them might go for skirmishers here. And which probably would be a pretty good counter to both of Promi's sieves. So I'll be curious to see if Promi and if Promi's AIs both go for archer sieves or not. If they go for archers in feudal age, that's what I would expect them to go for, but they could also go for skirmishers. So, a decent lumber camp position for red, for yellow. Got some gold that's nice and cozy against the trees there. Looking at Promi on the other side, they got a lumber camp that's in a sort of a forward position for red. And looking for green, looks like green's pretty close to the central forested area. So you got a Lumber camp here, that's, I'd say, a pretty good location. Got some nice back gold, and then blue here. Also building the lumber camp closer into the main forest, but also got a lumber camp here in the back. Not a lot of trees, but this lumber camp is safe. And some gold off to the side. And so, looking at just villager numbers, looks like Promis ahead by a villager for both players, and likely due to skipping loom. And yep, both the tribals went for loom, so maybe a slight advantage for Promi, as long as Promi's villagers don't get attacked here. So Promi's going up to feudal without loom. I bet Promi will be taking loom shortly once reaching feudal. If 
not, we'll see if Tribal can take advantage of the weak villagers. So we see that Promies went up with 24 villagers for red, while yellow went up with 25. So I wonder if we'll see them going for different strategies here. Red's going for two archer ranges, and yellow's doing the same. So I bet we'll see a lot of archer ranges here. Tribal's going for the two archer ranges with skirmishers, as you'd expect from Tribal. Tribal's famous strategy there. Let's see, what are reds? Okay, red is indeed going for full archers. And yellow is going for a split approach. Got at least one skirmisher there, but mostly archers. Here's the first attack. We got a tower going up, perhaps. It's at least foundation placed down. So I'm pretty sure we'll see Tribal get an advantage in numbers here. The skirmishers will counter the archers. And also Tribal's going with a more aggressive strategy you can see in the military numbers here. I think an important note is Promi's not going for a defensive tower. So as long as Tribal can do some damage here, take out the armies. We got a defensive tower coming from red. See if that goes up. Notice that Blue's a tower builder got killed. So it looks like Red will be able to fend off Green here. While Blue's, again, I think has been faring a little bit better than Green was, but this tower will go up. And Yellow's definitely switched into skirmishers here and is fending off Blue. Just looking at upgrades. Both have gone for full upgrades in Feudal Age. So if I were Tribal, I'd go for the trying to transition into Castle Age here, but we do have a tower that might go up from green. And so that should be a big advantage for green here. So green might be able to stay a bit longer. Let's see if these villagers can take it down. We got a villager flood. Those will take them down, but how many villagers will die from this? I think I heard about two or three villagers die from that. Yeah, that's at least a half dozen villagers dead from that attack. And green is able to smartly mix in some archers to be able to kill off some villagers. We got another foundation placed down for tribal. Alright, so Green was able to do some damage. We got a tower going up, but not a lot of military behind it here. We'll see if Blue can have some aggression against Yellow or not. But. Blue made it to Castle Age. That explains why Blue wasn't being very aggressive here. So we'll see if these elite skirmishers, that should be able to do a lot of damage here. Should is the key word. Let's see if it actually happens. So Blue's able to avoid the tower here. I think we got the starting scout here from Blue trying to help out. Blue is retreating. I'm not sure if that's the best choice here. Could have killed off more of Yellow's army. And Green and Yellow are in the Castle Age now as well. We'll see. Uh, I'm waiting for the to see which AIs transition into crossbows. Uh, we got a castle coming here from Yellow. And Blue's doing a switch into Eagle Warriors. I think this castle's going to go up. Seeing a lot of regripping here from, from Blue. 
this side. We got some knights here from green. And I imagine this tower's been killing off a fair number of skirmishers from green. The knight, looks like these knights are doing some work. And also notably, red is not up to castle age yet. No, red will be in a few seconds here. Definitely a staff the most losses of any player so far in the game. And just looking at pop numbers, Green definitely is the strongest player in the match so far. Oh man, look at all these villagers looking to die. And I'm not sure if... Did Red try to place a lumber camp down over here? I wonder if Red had a lumber camp foundation laid down. If not, maybe they're trying to gather around this lumber camp. That's one of Red's struggles. Not a lot of lumber camp spots to go for except Red into Green's army. Who's got a TC place in this horde location here? We'll see what Yellow can do, though. He got a nice offensive castle. Blue's going up to Imperial. So once again, I think we're into a position where Travel's got in the lead, kind of like game one, but we'll see if Travel's going to be able to actually use this advantage or uh, probably we'll be able to boom back up and catch up and get ahead in Imperial Age. It's like Green's trying to chase a Red Tan Archer. Alright, Yellow's going up to Imperial Age. So is Green. Red might be taking a while. But I think in this game, Travel should be able to take advantage here. Just looking at the pop numbers, Travel has like 50 more than even Yellow does. So Travel should be able to take advantage of this. Blue with Elite Eagle Warrior. Yellow trying to defend with Battle Elephants. And Elite Eagle Warriors with the Cavalry Bonus should be able to kill them off pretty easily. Green coming in here with a bunch of knights, and Red still has basically no defenses at this point. This tower is basically the only defender right now. Got some pikemen, but Green has enough archers to be able to kill them off, I think. Sally, defensive mangonel is not going to help a whole lot. Got a ram coming in, but it's taken down by villagers. So, I think green should be able to take care of red. Just see if uh, yellow can wait it out or not. And probably decides, nope. It's GG. Alright, so tribal's up. Two to one. One more win to tribal, and tribal will be winning the championship. So looking at game four, game four is going to be Land Nomad. If it's going to be anything like game one, maybe Tribal will have an advantage here. But we got a eight player match, so lots of chances for things to go well or to go wrong. And as you can see, a lot of popular Land Nomad civs. We got Tribal playing with Chinese. But Classic Nomad Civ, at least before uh, DE came out. And I'm kind of surprised to see the Promi going for Chinese in game one. But perhaps Promi was trying to go for an early win. So you got Chinese and Ethiopians for tribal. And then. Mayans, another classic Land Nomad Civ. And lastly, Persians. Got the uh, food and 
wood bonus at the beginning, which would help out to plant the early TC. And then Promi's going for Byzantines. Celts with the faster wood cutting should help for a early TC. Khmer, nice and easy farm placement. Let's see if Promi decides to take use of that or not. And then Mayans, again for the extra villager. All right, so let's switch over to the game. I think we're ready to go. Change the map size. Right, and here we go. We're off for what could possibly be the clinching game. All right, so just looking at the map here, so we got yellow going for a, a decent spot here. Could be a tall closer to the trees. Red's got for gone for this large forest here, and. Decent spot for the lumber camp. A little bit close to the edge of the map. Orange eyes uh, don't like as much, but we are next to some forge bushes, but you can't place a TC there. Hopefully orange will decide to place a TC here next to the deer and boar. And purple's pretty close to yellow here. Pretty close to a cliff though. And then switching over to tribal's placement. Got TC going down for Teal. Pretty close to the center of the map, a decent placement, but uh, notably Teal's not next to any food sources, so that's unfortunate. Blue's also placing the TC down, and look at all that food. That's a, that's a perfect placement for a TC. I'm jealous. Then uh, Gray's also got a good spot next to three boar. And then green is Looking to place a TC, it's not placed down yet, so having to go next to some forest. Maybe green didn't spot the food there. Let's see. All right, so probably went for lumber camp. Nice next to some wood, but not close to some food there. And not good placement for orange. That TC is not in a good spot at all. Not next to any food, it's next to a cliff. And okay ish TC for yellow. Next to some boar. And pretty close to some forge wishes, so not bad at all, I'd say. And then purple, next to some forest, but also next to some cliffs. That pur purple should have enough sheep to go go around for quite a while. All right, so just looking at the villager numbers, Orange is doing pretty good here, even though with the bad TC placement, you got a boar there. And green and yellow had some slow starts with the TC. But yellow's got a mill down. So overall, I think I, I like tribal placements better. Most of them are near some food sources. And if not, they're next to some wood. Promis are a bit further away, but Promi does currently have the score lead, so we'll see if uh, Tribal gets an advantage over time. Nice, yes, yeah, so we got some callbacks in the chat about the previous Land Nomad match. We'll see if Tribal can have the revenge. So looking at villager numbers here, Green does seem to be suffering quite a bit. Not a whole lot of food sources, and Green hasn't even found the sheep and the deer. Notably, Green hasn't started doing any sort of farms. Is that a mill? Okay, yep. Green's going for the emergency mill. Uh, 
So just looking at old raw numbers, probably does have the advantage at this point. So we'll see if Trouble's better placement can can end up being superior. So we lose the first to Fetal Age. And I bet we'll see. Let's see, so we got... Looks like Blue's going for the Fast Castle strategy. And we got Orange into Fetal Age. And going for a Fast Castle as well. Um, orange and Blue are about tied at their speed. And Gray. Yep, so all are going for Fast Castle strategies, which makes sense on Land Nomad. I'm just going to switch to Green's perspective here. Man, that's just so un unlucky with the exploration. Or, well, perhaps not, because... Hmm. That explorer is just stuck, almost. So it looks like Green's sort of bugging out with the exploration. Maybe that explains struggles. Hopefully, maybe a random farm will get extended way out here and Green will finally found, find the food sources. Okay, here we go. We got a horde of hunters coming in. Let's see, I don't see any fights yet. We've got blue and gray in Castle Age, and we got orange in Castle Age. Interesting. It's pretty far away for for Gray. Gray should have been able to build a mining camp here. So maybe that's another exploration issue. Second TC going down for Gray. Let's see. So Teal is definitely going for the fast military here. And we've got Mayans going for crossbows, as you'd expect. So hopefully, uh, Teal can do some damage here pretty quickly while the Red doesn't have a lot of defenses. So I'm going to turn off Marco Polo for a bit to see what exploration we've got. So Blues explored Purple. Makes sense. Alright, it looks like Teal just, or Gray just found red, which would be good for Teal. Oh, interesting. Teal's going for a mix Eagles and Crossbows approach. And Purple's actually first to strike against Blue. Purple has numbers advantage over Blue, so Purple should be able to do some damage here. Let's see what. Teal is able to do. Red's got some knights to defend. Also a camel. Not really the best against the lions, but we'll see. Alright, Teal has Eagle Warrior research, but it looks like the Eagle Warriors are dying out here. We've got crossbow coming, but those archers might die off first. Alright, knights from Promi. Yeah, so this, the military numbers seem to be in Tribal's favor. Promi is a little bit closer clumped together with each of the players, which could provide a defensive advantage. Might also make it hard to boom effectively. But Promi does seem to be a bit better situated. Got some, uh, being able to do some damage here with both yellow and purple knights. Alright, we got some knights coming in here from Gray. Let's see if they'd be able to help Blue or not. Blue's got some camels, which should be pretty good here. 
Gray has some camels as well. Let's go back to Teal here. We got crossbows coming. It should be pretty good against the camels here. I wonder if Red is going to switch back into the knights. Red does have a decent number of knights still. But these crossbows are enough that they should be able to take out Red's army here, I think. That's a good micro from Teal. Yeah, and Green's here to help out with some knights as well. Looks like Blue's able to fend off pretty well here. Just looking at some ages here, so Orange, which is very defensive so far, is an Imperial Age. Should be able to go for some Elite Eagle Warriors, I think. That's a pretty common strategy here. Oh, and Prummy's actually going for Elite Plumes. And got Ray and Imperial Age going for Cavalier. And the Tides actually turned purples on the defensive. Got some Rams here, which should be able to take out the TC here. Probably used to have a slight military advantage. I think Chromie overall has the bigger military numbers. And we'll see if these elite flint marchers are able to do a lot of damage coming through here. Teal's got some skirmishers, but not upgraded very much. Elite flint marchers should be able to do just fine against them, especially with these onagers. Let's look over here and see how Purple's doing to defend. Lots of pikemen here from Yellow. And I was looking decent for a while from Tribal, but I think that was partly due to Orange not joining the fight. But now it looks like Teal is going to be knocked out here pretty soon. Hopwise, it looks like purple could be pretty close. How many? Looks like purple has one TC, two TCs. But right now, Treble might be on the back foot here trying to defend. It looks like Treble's. The other three Treble players are focusing on this one area. We got Paladins from. Uh, from more gray. Yeah, not a huge amount of numbers here, but once Gray got enough numbers in the field, those could be able to take out all of the, the pikemen for yellow. I think it's good for Treble to focus on this side of the field. Unfortunately, Teal kind of had to die off. Hopefully, Treble can get a, some advantage here on this side of the field, but then hopefully for Krummy on Krummy's side, be able to continue pushing along here. Looks like Orange is going to join the main fight. Figure that Orange might try to push on in green, but maybe Orange is trying to push against blue instead. We've got a big castle here that if we can go up, I don't think it's going to go up, though. So that would have been big if it could go up. But it might have been enough siege where it wouldn't have stayed up for very long. We've got Alves and Cataphracts from Red. So it looks like Treble's window might be closing here. Blue's under the attack, it seems like, from all of the Chromie players. We got Paladins from Chromie's team as well. That might just been a converted Paladin, now that we've got it. Looks like Orange might have been pushing on this side of the field. 
got the green trying to go in with Shota Warriors. Unfortunately, not going to do a whole lot against Cataphracts and Arborists. I wonder if the Arborists would have been a better uh, power unit for the Ethiopians. It's kind of hard with the Ethiopians. You kind of just have to go with Arborists and Siege Owners, maybe. But overall, Ethiopians don't have a, a great power spike in the early age. But uh, orange is over here hitting this end. Blue is just about out of the game. And purple is just about recovered. So it's basically a two before at this point. Might be pretty close for, for tribal to call it. I think I'll wait for at least one of the either green or gray to fall into low pop and then call it. It looks like it's going to go on to the game five of the championship, which is very exciting. Castle going down here for gray. Got a lot of paladins here, but if this mass is, gets defeated, that's going to be about the end of the game. Travel. Yep, green's taken out. I think that's GG. Going on to game five. Go through the scores here. So it looks like Tribal wasn't able to get some payback from the previous match. Yeah, thankfully for that match, we didn't see any bugging out like we did in the first match on the Fen Crazy map. Alright, stands at two wins for each. The last match is quite fitting on the Classic Arabia. We've got Celts versus Aztecs. Now will be an interesting matchup. I'm trying to think about how those will face off against each other. The In a human match, both of them are some of the top dressing sieves. I wonder if we'll happen to see that or not. It's a lot harder to pull off those in an AI match, though. Okay, so we got Tribal going for Celts. Pretty sure the Tribal will just end up going for Skirmishers. And the Wood Bonus will help out there. And Promi is most likely going to go for Archers, which will end up um, transitioning to Skirmishers, I think. So not bad choices either way. Alright, here we go. I think all the settings are good. Ready for the final match. So we got both players on the left side of the map decently close together, but not within normal distances. And I think Trouble is going to have to cause some damage early on against Promi. I think what we learned from the previous matches is that if Promi is less, mo left mostly untouched, then Promi usually gets the advantage in the late game. So we'll see. So looking at Promi, Promi's going to be on the back foot, probably in the fetal age for a while. We've got a small gold mine here in the front, but the main gold mine here is in the back. The first lumber camp is forward though, so that could be targeted pretty pretty easily by tribal. Got a boar coming in for Promi. Also got a mill and deer on the forward end for Promi. So it's possible that food could be a bit difficult for Promi, but we got deer coming in, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm kind of looking to see where the, the 
second lumber camp will go. It's kind of hard because I'm guessing Promi's gonna, yep, gonna go for the second forest. So both forests are forward for Promi, so it could be difficult for Wood, Feudal Age, if Tribal can get the upper hand. Yeah, we've seen Tribal to try to do some forward towers going along with the Skirmisher Rush. But I think Promi has one of the best the trash defenses of all of the modern AIs in the game. So we'll see how Rummy can react against that. But if it does go to Treble B on the back foot, we've got a nice wood line in the back that Treble went for. Looks like the second Lumber Camp is going to go on the same forest. And eh, it's not really the best position for it, but. So you got the separate second lumber camp going up, and also uh, back forage bushes. I think probably would have liked Tribal's position here. The the gold as well is off to the side, nice and safe. I do notice that Tribal's didn't go for the second boar. Wonder if Tribal spotted or not. So Tribal didn't spot it. That could mean that Tribal's flesh might not be as effective. We'll see. And Chromie is indeed going for normal feudal ace strategy. And Chromie is going for... Looks like a fast castle, actually. Let's see if... I'm going to switch to Chromie's perspective here. Chromie could go for... Um, Eagle Wars in defense if Tribal goes for Archers. That could be could be pretty effective if uh, Tribal goes for Skirmishers. A couple Eagle Scouts in Feed Village could be effective. Also got an Archer range coming for Red. And I was thinking it was going to go for Fast Castle, but Red is uh, nowhere near for the resources for Castle Age and went up with Probably around 24 25 villagers. Alright, so here's the battle music for the first battle of the final match. We have a. Looks like Rumi's trying to go for a defensive tower. Going up pretty late here. We got no defenses here from Promi. We got a tower going up here. Let's see if Promi's able to beat it back. So it looks like Promi's going to be able to... It might go up, but Promi's going to kill it off pretty quickly here. It's had a lot of villager losses. And Promi did go for the Eagle Warrior defense here with a couple skirmishers. But not able to get a whole bunch of Eagle Warriors massed up against the skirmishers here. Got a tower trying to go up from Promi here. Got it at 53%. Kill that villager. 64%. Mix in a couple spearmen. It's uh, they're against eagle warriors, but spearmen, uh, spearmen are way better than skirmishers against eagle warriors. Let's see. Uh, KD is pretty close for both players. Also got some man at arms mixed in against the Eagle Warriors. That should be a nice transition there. But this tower is going to go up for Prummy. See if we can get some man at arms going against that tower here. Looks like Tribal's going to instead try to avoid it. Go on the left side of Promi's town here. Wonder if Tribal will be able to find this slumber camp over here. That would be a good spot to target. But overall, I'd say this flesh has done a decent job against Promi. As I say, that Promi does have 
a better villager numbers, and it probably is also not close to Castle Age at all. So we'll see over the next few minutes if Trouble is able to keep up the pressure here. Alright, looks like Chrome is able to save up the resources for Castle Age. Trouble's gonna have to respawn pretty quickly here to be able to keep up. Looks like Trouble's about to research in a few seconds here. Alright, there's Castle Age for blue. But Chrome's gonna have about a minute window to be able to make some real headway against tribal. So it looks like Blue is able to hit this lumber camp a few times, which is good. Send a lot of probably villagers away from the wood lines. But Red does have a wood line in the back. I do notice that that Promi is not going for any sort of military upgrades in the Castle Age. We got Bodkin going. Also the TC going up. So, looks like Promen might not be able to gain an immediate advantage in early Castle Age. So, I bet that Tribal's going to stay on the aggressive here. We got some long swords, which should be uh, able to prevent Promen from going into uh, Eagle Warrior transition. Uh, Promen is going for elite skirmishers. The long swords should be good against that. And of course, the tribal could also switch into knights as well to counter the skirmishers. We'll also see the tribal going into crossbows, something you don't see every day with Celts. But of course, Celts are kind of weird when thinking about the Castle Age units. They don't have good knights or good crossbows necessarily. Although I suppose it doesn't really matter as much until Imperial Age crossbows can do just fine as Celts. Alright, so taking stock here, uh, as things are still for a while, Trouble's done a transition into Knights here, has an advantage of about 15 villagers over Promi, but Promi does have a military advantage here. So, but that military advantage might be going away here in a second. I think the most notable thing is that Romy has gone for mostly range units. This night transition might turn out really well for Tribal here. So I don't think, even if Romy has a slight, very slight military advantage, they're not powerful enough to really make a dent in Tribal's economy. See so yeah, a Pikeman research coming in for Promi. Tribal's taking a passive approach for the moment. So we see still it's a pretty consistent 15 villager lead for Tribal. Tribal taking this gold in the center. We've got a TC going up. I'm kind of curious to see if one of those AIs is going to build a castle. That could be the next step here to get an advantage here in the middle. I think I like the uh, composition of tribal better here. Knights and crossbows. Each of them should be able to take out the, the scattering of pikemen and the, the skirmishers that Promi is using most of the time. Got some rams here from Tribal. Pikemen are trying to fend them off. Also got some crossbows to try to take care of the pikemen. If Tribal can take down this TC, that could be a big advantage here. Romy's trying to go for this gold in the center, but that's not going to happen. Alright, we've got a defensive castle here from Tribal. With some Void Raiders coming in. And Tribal and Promi are also both going up to the Imperial Age. Looks like Tribal might be about 30 seconds ahead. 
I don't know about you, I'm, I'm enjoying this final match. It's exciting. Yeah, so these Woodrears are going to do some nice work against the, both the Pikemen and the Skirmishers. And Tribal should be able to transition pretty quickly into Elite Road Raiders. Looks like Tribal's built up the most of the resources for that upgrade. Meanwhile, what what is Promi going to go for? Promi doesn't really have the resources to go for a big upgrade here, but Promi is going for two-handed swordsman. Probably a good choice to counter the the Wood Raiders. But there does seem to be a pretty defensive approach. We've got Arbalest coming as well. And still no castle in the center, which is what I was wanting to see. So Prummy is the first to get to one of the big Imperial upgrades with Arbalest. And Treble still doesn't have Elite Wood Raider coming. So those two and swordsmen, if they are made in mass, could do some good damage against Wood Raiders here. Alright, Elite Wood Raider is coming for the Tribal. The the villager numbers are now about equal, so I think it now just comes down to tech advantage here. Trouble does have a slight military lead, and the elite upgrade is now coming in, has come in for blue, so we'll see if Trouble can make advantage of that here. Looks like, just looking at military numbers, it's happening, I think. Got about a 20, 25 military lead here as Prome goes below 10 military units. And also the villager accounts going to uh, what was about equal villager numbers is down to about like uh, almost a 40 villager lead for tribal. So those elite wood raiders are doing some work. Oh, look at that. This uh, got a Jaguar Warrior switch from Promi. Things are looking bad for Promi, but if you get enough of those Jaguar Warriors in, that could that could make a switch, uh, make it scary for a moment here. But I'm not sure if Promi's going to be able to get the numbers. Let's see how many, how many castles does Promi have here? We got a castle going up from Tribal. Yeah, so one castle is not going to be able to do it, I think, for Prummy here. Not be able to pump out enough Jaguar Warriors. And that castle goes down. Prummy's down to 40 villagers. It's pretty much GG at this point. Tribe, I think, is going to. It's going to be our winner. And Tribal is our winner of the AI Scriptors Championship. Congratulations to SD. Change the score here. Yes, yeah, so I think that, that final match was a fantastic game. We had some good matches all around from two pretty equally matched AIs. Yeah, I think in this game, just reflecting through. Tribal is able to keep up the pressure pretty consistently against Promi in the early part of the game. And Promi tried to make a push, but I think Promi made a mistake of not going for the strongest units in Castle Age. I think it's harder for Aztecs in Castle Age. The, the quote, strong units might have been like Eagle Warriors and Crossbows. But instead, Promi went for late skirmishers and Pikemen to try to encounter Tribal's army. And I'm not sure if that, maybe in a different match, that would have paid off. It'd be interesting to see. But in the end, Tribal made that um, made that aggression to Feudal Age work. And was able to keep up the pressure in Castle Age with the uh, strong crossbows and knight mix. And then the Void Raiders ran, went on Rampage and Imperial Age. All right, so that kind of wraps it up for the AI Scriptures Championship Tournament that Aleph hosted. So things to look forward to coming ahead. 
the SC is planning a, uh, a 1v1 tournament coming up here pretty soon to be hosted on Definitive Edition, which uh, I think will be our first Definitive Edition tournament. And then the, the Davis Cup, which should be held on user patch, might come, be coming a few months down the road near the end of the year. So a lot of uh, tournaments to be looking forward to. I think things will be heating up around here. And who knows, we might be able to, if my schedule lightens up, might be able to get some ladder matches going as well. So hope this is all enjoyable for you. There's a nice refreshing change to get back into streaming some AI matches. So hope you all enjoyed. And thanks to you all for watching. Uh, have a good night. Let's go through scores here.